All right, so welcome back to physics with your physics teacher, Mr. Fernando. Oh, I'm covering the question. All right, uh, so today we're doing question number three. We cover one and two, which was all about pushing a box. So the first one was a man, the second one a woman pushed the box, the third one, we don't know the gender, okay? So the third one, it just says, a 12 kilogram box at rest on the floor requires a horizontal force of 47 newtons to start moving it. Once it starts moving, the same horizontal force makes the box accelerate at 1.1 meters per second square. Find A, mu s, which is the coefficient of static friction, and B, mu k, find the coefficient of kinetic friction. So in this case, it's a two-part question. There are two things going on. First, the person is trying to push the block, so it's not successful at pushing it to make a move. Then, once they find the force required to make a move, then they are moving it with that force, and the acceleration will be 1.1. So it's a two-part question. The first one, again, person tries to push, does it move, then once it starts to move, you found the force, then it makes it accelerate at 1.1. So in this question, we have a horizontal force and a box. All right, so let's draw a box, a person pushing a box, and let's try to do the first case where we're trying to find the coefficient of static friction, and that's gonna be when the box is not moving. So static means not moving. So you're pushing, 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 but it's not moving. So if it's not moving, the object's at rest. If the object is at rest, then that automatically gives you a hint that the net force acting on this object has to be zero. Wow, that's gonna be really helpful because now all we have to do is identify the forces acting on it and whatever they are adding up to, we know it has to be zero. Well, the person's pushing, and again, in this case, we're assuming that they're pushing to the right, so the applied force is to the right. We cannot escape from gravity, so the force of gravity will be directly downwards, Fg. The normal force will be pointing upwards, perpendicular to the surface, Fn. And there's something resisting this motion, which is frictional force. But to be more specific, since it is not moving, we call that friction force static friction. Fs. All right, so again, the net force should be zero. What does that mean? The applied force should be balanced out by the static frictional force. The normal force should be balanced out by the force of gravity. So if we proceed to find the net force, which is the sum of all the forces, normal force, force of gravity, applied force, and static frictional force, they should all add up to zero because the object is stationary. That's fantastic. But this is a vector equation, and we already know the vector equations have a secret, right? They're gonna have components along the x and components along the y. So that means we should split these equations along the x and along the y. Well, along the x, we know they add up to zero already, but we have to consider the convention of if a force points to the right, we take it as positive. So applied force is positive and the static frictional force is to the left, we're gonna take that as negative. Wow, it's quite easy now. We just need to simplify this equation to applied force equals to static frictional force, which is what we already expected. So we didn't even have to do that much work. We expected as much already. Awesome, so let's walk in equation number one to play. Let's play with equation number two. Well, not play with it, let's try to find it first. Sorry, my bad. So along the y components, there are only two forces, which is the normal forces up. So we take it as positive, gravity is down, negative. And again, since the object is at rest, the net force along the y should also be zero. So we can simplify this to the normal force equals to the force of gravity. 
But the force of gravity, we already know the equation is just mg. Welcome equation number two. All right, so the question was asking us to find the coefficient of static friction. Well, that's where another relationship comes into play because we have a formula for kinetic friction and we have a formula for static friction. So the formula for static friction, similar to that of the kinetic one, is the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So we could make a substitution here. The applied force is actually equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Right? Where here I just replace Fs into this equation here. But we have another assistance, right? Because this equation is lacking the normal force, but we found that from the y component. So from the y component, we make another substitution. So what does it give us? The applied force is actually equal to the coefficient of static friction times mg. And do they give us the mass of the box? Oh yeah, 12 kilograms, that's great. And the force that they applied it, 47. Oh, so we need to isolate for the coefficient. So we have to do a BIMOR algebra. Uh, okay. Mu S equals to the applied force divided by M G. In other words, 47 divided by the mass, which was 12 and 9.8. So this is the part where I need to use some assistance from the calculator. You know, I wish I had an assistant to do the calculations for me. Hmm. Maybe one day. 47 divided by 12 times 9.8 equals to 0 0.39. Ah, 0 0.4. Which makes sense, right? Because the coefficient of friction should be a number between 0 and 1. So if it's 0 0.4, you're like, oh, that makes sense, that's good, that may, that, that's going to have a high chance of being correct, but it's correct, I'm not going to be wrong, right? And we're done. We've done part A at least, right? Asking us for the coefficient of static friction. So that's when the object is at rest. But once the static friction it achieves its maximum value, once you go a little bit beyond that, then you can start to actually push the block. And once you start to push the block, we're saying the same force makes it accelerate at this rate. So what we're going to do, we're going to draw the scenario for the second case. Okay, so it's very similar. We have a horizontal surface, a random person. They didn't tell us the gender, so genderless, so person, okay. And we have the same applied force. Once again, we have the normal forces up, the force of gravity is down. But in this case, the block is moving. Once the block is moving, the frictional force is no longer static friction, it has to be kinetic friction. F K. I drew my vector purposely shorter than the applied force. So normally the static frictional force is always greater than the kinetic frictional force, generally. So this is generally bigger than the kinetic one. So that's why I drew it shorter. Well, this kind of means that the applied force is greater then the frictional force. So it's not balanced. If an object, if a force is not balanced, then that's gonna cause the object to accelerate, which means our acceleration is to the right. Wow, that was a lot to take in. I hope you're able to follow all of that. So we have an unbalanced force, which is the applied force. When you have an unbalanced force, that causes acceleration. And in general, static frictional force is always greater in magnitude than the kinetic frictional force. So we're going to now repeat a similar analysis like we always do. We want to identify the net force. 
we have this force of gravity, the normal force, the applied force, and the kinetic frictional force. Just like before, we want to break it down along its components, x and y, f net x equals to, the applied force is to the right, so we take that as positive, and the kinetic friction force is to the left, so we're going to take that as negative. So f applied minus f k. Great. Along the y, f net y equals to the normal force is positive because it points up, force of gravity is down, so it's negative. Great. Now, like usual, once we do the main structure, then we apply Newton's laws. Now, I cheated in this case because I got too excited because I knew it was a rest, but normally you apply it after this stage. So let's apply Newton's second law. So apply F net equals to M. A. So what does that mean? M A X equals to the applied force minus kinetic frictional force. And likewise, we're going to apply the second law in the y component. But since the object is not moving vertically, like we argued before, since no vertical motion, the net force along the y should be zero. So since no vertical motion, F net Y equals to zero. You know, sometimes you could skip this step. If you already got so clever that you already recognize that the normal force was balancing the force of gravity, right? Which is what the same conclusion leads us to. Which is what we got before. So the normal force equals to Mg. Equation number four, equation number three. Wow, this looks a bit scary now, but let's not lose track of what we were trying to find. We were trying to find the static friction of force, which we did, and in part B, we want the kinetic friction of force. So it's almost a very similar process. The only thing is that in the kinetic friction of force, we had the object was accelerating. So let's use equation three. And just like we had a relationship for static frictional force, kinetic frictional force takes in a very similar shape. Shape, yeah, very similar format. So we're gonna borrow some help from a different equation. So Fk equals to mu k Fm. So we're gonna make that substitution now. And since we know the normal force in that case equals to mass times gravity, we can continue playing with this equation. Great. And we were trying to isolate for the coefficient of kinetic friction. So let's move things around. And the very last step, since we want to isolate for the coefficient of friction, just divide both sides by mg, because that's going to be the, um, I guess, coefficient. Ah, we've seen so much coefficient, it might get confusing. But yeah, it's called the coefficient. So mu k equals to f apply minus ma divided by mg. Hmm, it looks a bit messy. So just to be nice to you, I'm going to erase it and rewrite the last step. Okay, so mu k equals to f applied minus m a divided by m g. So notice that now we have an equation we were given the applied force, which was the same from part A. The acceleration we were given, which was 1.1. The mass of the object we have, G we have. So now all we need to do is plug it into our, plug the numbers into the equation and use the calculator. 
So let's try to see what that will give us. Uh, I hope I don't make a mistake. This, this makes me nervous, like I mentioned. Calculator work is not so easy. Hmm. The applied force is 47 minus the mass times acceleration. All of this divided by mg. And again, remember, we're likely to be correct if we get a number less than one. And it turns out we got a number 0 0.29. So approximately 0 0.3. So it's likely to be correct because the coefficient of frictions, they're usually a number between zero and one. And like I argued before, the static frictional one Oh no, what did I get before for static frictional? I think it was 0 0.4. So the static frictional one was 0 0.4, the kinetic one should be lower, which was 0 0.3, so you're like, ah, oh, that makes sense. Now we see it numerically, so we were correct. Uh, so that's enough of our pushing blocks. Let's try to make a different type of examples in the next question.